Good Sunday morning. Friday was yet another reminder that these are not ordinary times. Consider, we're just nine days away from the first national election since the attack on the U.S. Capitol. And obviously, the threat of violence hasn't ebbed. The chilling and violent attack on Paul Pelosi, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's 82-year-old husband, is raising fears of more political violence. Pelosi's husband had surgery for a skull fracture and is recovering after being beaten by a man with a hammer who broke into their home in San Francisco. Speaker Pelosi was the target, but was in Washington at the time with her security detail. There was no security detail at the House. Both President Biden and former President Obama addressed the assault. It's one thing to condemn the violence, but you can't condemn the violence unless you condemn those people who continue to argue the election was not real, that it's being stolen, that all the, all the malarkey that's being put out there to undermine democracy. Talk has to stop. That's the problem. A politics where's, where some in office or who aspired office work to stir up division, to, to make folks as angry and as afraid of one another for their own advantage. And all of this has been amped up, hyped up, 24-7, on social media, on platforms that oftentimes find controversy and conflict more profitable than telling the truth. Donald Trump has yet to make any statement about the attack. The House Republican leader, Kevin McCarthy, did denounce the violence. Targeted violence is not new in American politics. Our country has a long history of it. Eleven U.S. presidents have been direct targets of assassins. Four of them were killed. Many others have been the objects of assassination plots. Democratic Congresswoman Gabby Giffords was shot in 2011. Republican Whip Steve Scalise was shot in 2017. Both almost died. But... Since former President Trump's election in 2016, the number of recorded threats against members of Congress has increased by 967%. That is not a typo, folks, to more than 9,600 last year. A month ago, Republican Senator Susan Collins warned of the surge in threats, telling the New York Times this, I wouldn't be surprised if a senator or a House member were killed. And the recent record speaks for itself. In June, a man was arrested with a gun near Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh's home after saying he planned to kill Kavanaugh and himself. In July, a man was charged with felony stalking after threatening to kill Democratic Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal. The same month, Lee Zeldin, the Republican nominee for governor of New York, was attacked on stage at a campaign event. In August, a man was sentenced after threatening to kill Dr. Fauci and his family. Also in August, a pro-Trump armed man wearing body armor tried to breach the FBI's Cincinnati field office in the days after they executed a search at Mar-a-Lago. In September, a Texas woman was charged after making death threats against U.S. District Judge Aileen Cannon. She's the judge overseeing the Mar-a-Lago document fight. And on Friday, a man pled guilty to threatening to kill Democratic Congressman Eric Swalwell and three members of his staff. All of this adds up to a chilling timeline of recent political violence. And none of these incidents, none of them, are even directly related to January 6th. That's where more than 880 people have been federally charged in the Capitol insurrection so far, including a man this week who was sentenced to seven and a half years in prison for dragging police officer Michael Fanon into that angry pro-Trump crowd where he was brutally assaulted. And yet there is little evidence some on the right have tempered their rhetoric. And Pelosi herself has often been a target. He must go. He is a clear and present danger to the nation that we all love. I'm going to Washington to stop the Pelosi agenda, and you're not going to silence me. Biden, Pelosi, and other communist Democrats hate America, hate God, and hate our way of life. We are going to end crazy Nancy Pelosi, and she's nuts. She's crazy. We're going to end her political career. Her political career is going to be ended once and for all. Before Friday's assault occurred, the suspect, David DePepe, confronted Mr. Pelosi, shouting, Where is Nancy? Where are you, Nancy? Those were words that were eerily similar to these on January 6th. Where are you, Nancy? We're looking for you.
Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.